Uh, the next comma is Hirachi Monji no Kamae. Hirachi Monji no Kamae, what we need to understand is this posture here is a large, flat posture. <laughs> Hira means flat, Ichi Monji means one line. Yep. To me, in my opinion, in this martial art that we study, two things I know to be true. Hirachi Monji no Kamae is the most combative and understanding, understandable, but also most misunderstood posture. I hear so much stuff about this posture, it drives me nuts. But once you understand what it truly means inside the Popo Jitsu, how it differs from the Kukishinryu, you're like, ah, oh, okay, this makes great sense. This is Kurai Dori. This is what it means. You have to understand this. In the Popo Jitsu, it means to keep your perceptions wide and wrap your opponent. What I'd like everybody to do is just stand up for a second, just face forward, and I want you to open your arms. I want the arms to be at the same height as your eyes. So, in the same height as Sega no Kamae, they're like this. I want tension in the fingers, soft tension, not too tight. As you're looking straight ahead, I simply want you to wiggle your fingers a little bit, just a little bit. Then, slowly bring them forward until you see them in your peripheral field of vision while you're looking straight ahead. And those of you who are looking in the mirror, <laughs> don't. If you see them, now start moving them back until they start to go out of your peripheral field. That is your Hiraichi Monji no Kamae. Not this, not that, but the peripheral threshold that you have. This is Hiraichi Monji no Kamae. Now, okay, relax, and let's talk about this. He is in uh, Kogeki no Kamae. He's here. He's ready to attack me, or just Kosei no Kamae. He's just He's ready to attack me. This is where the line of thread is. I'm here. Now, that changes. Now, I see David, and I see him. Now, my field of focus widens from this point to about 35 degrees. Now I'm like, whoa, and I'm here. Then suddenly, his friend Mark and him. Now I have this, and I'm here. Now I have to maintain awareness of what's happening in a plus 180 degree field. Athletes call it court vision, it's field vision. And I'm aware, I see right now David just put it, he's got his face in his hachimaki. Before he did that, he put his right hand on his chest. There's movement over there, nobody else is moving. I'm looking straight ahead. A car just went by up there. Look, look at truck. Everything else I can see. The feet just move. The hands just move. I'm looking straight ahead. The reason I'm pointing this out is because when you're training this next set of techniques, do that. Don't stand there like a big giant target. Your hands are out here to condition your peripheral field of vision. Your body goes through physiological changes when threat is imminent, when your life is at risk, and all of a sudden, you start to feel numb in the arms, numb in the legs. Blood is pulling up from the appendages because you, 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 you know, your primitive self is saying you're going to be fighting the saber tooth tiger, so you're going to be getting cuts on the arms and legs. You begin to hyperventilate. Fight or flight kicks in. You want to you know, get all the soil out of your body and urine out because you're probably going to get an internal injury and you don't want that to go toxic. And you get tunnel vision. Your field of vision begins to close rapidly and you can't see what's happening around you. All these things happen when you become scared for your life. However, if you change that through constant exposure and pressure, and you train under heightened threshold, meaning I'm conditioning, I'm training, I'm seeing that movement, I'm seeing that Mark's not moving, the hands just dropped over there. And when he comes in and strikes at me in my face, I drop back, hook, and hit. I'm still here, and I see the hands up on the face over here. And I see the, hand, the person who moved just behind you. And I see the left hand of Melissa going through her hair. But I'm looking straight ahead. Right? I have complete, I, I know what's going on around me. If you're not doing this when you're training Hirachi Monji no Kamae, you're just standing there like a big dumb person with your arms open. And that's stupid. Hirachi Monji no Kamae is an intention. You have to do it. If you're not doing that, then you're not doing it. Kugi Shinju, however, is different. Please. Just stand here. Come in a little closer. When we train this in Kukishinyu, the Dakin Taijitsu, he's in Seigan no Kamae. 
You see, Miguel's not looking at me. Miguel's looking at her. I'm like this, and I get into his field, and I'm looking straight at him, and I move. When he moves this way, I move, and I keep my radius around her. He moves this way, like go this way again, I don't do this. This is what he wants me to do, now he's got the line of attack. This is Hirachi Monji no Kamai for a completely different Yuha. This is why understanding the traditions are important. This is why I say, well, I don't do the kata, I do blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, great, you're not going to get the martial art. This is very important that you understand this because these principles, they're completely different techniques. They may be the same position, but they're completely different techniques. Okay? Does everybody understand that? I have to say, you're lucky you didn't get punched. I know, he's coming at it. Okay, let's look at what I'd like you guys to do. We're going to do three different versions of this. You don't actually want you to open mind. He's going to strike at the face. The first one is I'm going to step straight back like this. Like I'm stepping to Sagan no Kamai. As I'm moving back, I'm simply contacting his elbow with my hand, like this. And then from here, as I shift my body forward, I press his elbow in, and then I leap in to the Kuko. Knocking him back in the direction in which he came. This is an important principle in the basics of the Kuko Gyogoru, however, is when he strikes, I'm hitting him in the direction of his energy. I'm letting him go, and I'm just smashing him as he's passing by. But Wujutsu is the opposite. Okay, because you're attacking the structure of the body. So this is the first one. The second one you'll do with your training partner is he or she's going to be striking to the center of the body. From here, when the strike happens, I pivot and I receive with my forearm like this. And then from this position, I come in. The hands are moving together. One. You need to make sure that when this strike happens, he almost hits you and the fist just brushes past you. And in fact, it's okay if he tries to grab your wallet and it ends up in your gi. This, this, this means you're doing it correctly. Come in very close. There's two different ways of doing this. One, go, and hit down. The second is with the arm. He strikes, one, like this, like that. Depending on height, it's also with the palm down. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Here, you're pivoting on the ball of your foot, allowing the strike to pass. This hand is coming up, and the arms, the shoulder line stays on the same plane, and they stay over your hips. Then I step in, striking straight downward to the point called Shidome with a shoe dog. Yeah. The first one, we're going to do them together, stepping back. Stepping in, Urushito. Somewhat very simple. Second one, pivot, and you can use the forearm. You can also turn the arm like this, or the hands. This is going to be contextual to your training partner. Then from here, strike down. If you're doing this against Mark, use your forearm. When he's doing it against you, he's going to use his hand. First technique, right foot stepping straight back. Now, as I step forward, this hand's going to be moving. Shuto. Hirachi Wonji no Kamai. You're going to now step back with the left foot. Push Shuto. Very simple. Next, Hirachi Wonji no Kamai. From this position, again, make sure you're looking here and you're looking here while you're looking straight ahead. Pivot on the ball of the left foot. Lift the right hand up. Palm goes against the side of the elbow. Body weight comes forward onto the right leg. As I step forward with the right leg, striking straight down the shuto. We go to the opposite side. Pivot on the right foot. From here, left arm comes up. Step in with the left. Boom! Strike down. Make sure you're breathing, everyone. You know what you want you to come on. We're going to pivot on the left foot now. And from here, I'm going to turn my fist like this. I step in. Shuto. Now to the opposite side. I'm going to pivot my right, like this, turning my fist down. Oh. Good, yeah, that's okay. Also, as the hand comes up and my body's low in this position, not this position, this position, I'm minimizing his line of sight to this point in my body, which is a primary target for a bladed weapon. Second, this hand here conceals whether or not I'm breathing fast, or 
my heart rate is up because of my carotid artery. And he can tell if he's good. He can tell if I'm scared, I'm relaxed, I'm anxious. He can see if I'm breathing fast. He can tell a lot by, about this area of my body. If I'm like this, everything. Gyokuru is different. Sega no Kamai is this. A perpendicular line with your arm, with your hand to the arm. He cannot see my palm. This, or just throwing my hand up like this, is not wise. He can see my palm. Here, all these details matter for very specific reasons. And this is Kurai Dori. Nor did I hold up. Eat! 